Hey guys, what's up? How you all doing tonight? Um, I'm sitting down with a copy of Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows, the Battle World Secret Wars original trade paperback from that event, and I'm wondering to myself, maybe I should start making some sort of comic review, but I don't know how far I want to go into it. I mean, I feel like there are some comics out there that don't get a lot of appreciation from any publisher. Whether it's Marvel, DC, IDW, Image, Dynamite, Dark Horse, I feel like I could make, I, I could bring awareness. I don't know if I want to do a review or if I want to tell people whether or not there's something really interesting going on and it's being overshadowed or it's not really being brought to the surface enough. Comic book companies don't usually do their best to market certain books. I don't know why, because they could have commercials, they could have, um, well, I don't want to say like, cosplayers, they could, like, I don't want to suggest that the fans should be doing their work for them. Um, Marvel doesn't usually go out of their way to let people know that their books exist. The only way they usually do is through headlines like CBR, Comic Book Resources, Bleeding Cool, and Newsarama, and other places... Um, that uh, that they give interviews with. So if I were to do comic book reviews or something interesting like that, I'd say that, I mean, I have a couple trade paperbacks that I think a lot of people might like to see, that they might like to get in the stories that, that are in the books. I think a lot of people would like to get into them. I mean, I'm not saying I'm going to sell anything I have. I just want people to enjoy the same reading experience I have because I know the comic book fan base mostly surrounding Marvel and maybe DC, mostly Marvel. There's a lot of toxicity and there's a lot of negativity going on, mostly because of controversial writers and uh, certain runs with artists that people just don't really... I want to be polite about this, but there are just certain artists that sort of evoke a reaction from the reader, a positive reaction, more than other artists can. And... I guess depending on what kind of art you personally draw or you like seeing, that your reaction's going to vary. There are some people who are patient and lenient with art that takes a lot of liberties. Art styles, as in good coloring, um, characters that look like a, a well-animated cartoon, or and some people like the cartoony art style that... That looks like it was done for, for children. Like a Teen Titans Go-esque cartoony art style. Like everybody has a different preference is what I'm trying to say. But a comic book is more than just art. How is the writing? How is the pacing? How is the character development? How is the, the cover? Uh, the interiors? The exterior? How many pages? How much content is in it? Uh, like uh, is the ending enough to leave you wanting for more? I'm sitting down with Spider-Man comics, and I'm thinking to myself, I want to do more. Like, I want to let people know that these books exist, and that exist. Sorry, and they deserve to sell. They deserve to be recognized because they're much, they're very fun, they're enjoyable, and a lot of readers are in for a good time. Like, they'll never want to. I mean, they'll want to return to the book. They'll never want to stop reading. And I think that Marvel tends to create problems around certain books that they don't want overshadowing others. I mean, if you look at the ama the two amazing titles going on right now, Amazing Spider-Man, written by Dan Slott, and Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows, now written by Jody Hauser, I think that Marvel wants to sort of create this uh, divide between books. Like, they don't want the current Spider-Man book, e even though it's not doing too well from what I hear, they don't want that being, oh, like, they don't want a source of negativity from that book to overshadow a source of positive reactions. I'm not saying the new uh, Renew Your Vows book is positive. I'm saying that the books that Jerry Conway and Ryan Stegman have done together, I think the, those books, I, Marvel just doesn't want a Spider-Man that they don't like being told and being mass-marketed and mass-distributed. I don't think that they like Renew Your Vows being as well recognized as it's been. I mean, whether you like Comic Story and Comic Island, whether you hate them, um, YouTubers have a lot of power to promote certain 
pro um, to promote any type of property so long as they put their heart, soul, and their energy into it. And I, I'm not saying by any means I have the greatest sub count. I, I, it doesn't bother me that I only have 1,000 subscribers. If anything, I'd like to use what I have and focus on that so that I can better promote comics I feel are worthy of a person's time. Besides reviewing the books themselves or giving you guys some kind of insight into what the content in the book holds, I'd also like to uh, leave links for several distributors such as Amazon or Marvel directly and tell people where they can go to buy a copy. I mean, I think part of what I'm going to do is built off of the questions that you guys have about certain books. I mean, I'm willing to take any question and answer it to the best of my abilities. I think part of the fun in making these videos isn't just it promoting a product or telling you reasons why it's good. I think part of the joys in what I want to do is asking the fans or asking the fans or rather if the fans have questions they ask me. Like what do they see what do they want to see in a Spider Man comic? Do they want to see Peter embracing his youth? Do do they want to see Peter embracing his responsibility? If people ask me any question uh, that I can answer about the way a comic is going or what's there to look forward to in a given comic, maybe I could, I, I think I could do that. Like I could answer and give really good responses. Uh, and, and believe me, these aren't books that, uh, that I have a certain bias attached to. No, I think books also deserve, deserve to be judged based on the quality of their, uh, of the message they convey. I think that books should be judged based on the quality of their storytelling. So if a book is not doing well because it's not being written well or because it's not because it's not being original or if it's using tired tropes or if it's not keeping the reader on their toes or if it doesn't surprise the reader with anything to look forward to. Uh, it's 2017, 2018, 2019. I mean, we're getting to 2020. I, new ideas are really hard to come by, but you can create different executions. Executions are different than ideas. You can tell a story a certain way, but you don't have to tell a new story. I mean, Spider-Man being married and having a child is not new. Um, it, it, it isn't. But the way certain writers go about it, like having Spider-Man raise an eight-year-old girl with his wife Mary Jane instead of turning her turning the kid into a teenager and having Peter Parker retire from web slinging i think th like that's a different angle that we have never really gotten the chance to see and you know you know something if marvel ever does get the rights to spider-man on film back into their company i mean i hope someone at marvel i hope one day someone at marvel will be looking at dc animation and realize hey maybe with all this disney money maybe we can create another branch for the adults. Maybe we can give our, our older fans something to look forward to in animation. Maybe we could adapt stories like Craven's Last Hunt, Return of the Sinister Six, Venom, uh, Peter Parker getting the symbiote costume, and Eddie Brock becoming Venom in his original incarnation from the comics not an altered origin, a, a, or maybe Renew Your Vows could be one of those story arcs th in the battle world that get an animated adaption. I mean, I don't think they'll ever do it, because Marvel seems to be hitting for uh, not as much of a common demographic. I mean, they're hitting for kids purely. They're not hitting for families. They're not hitting for all ages, which I really think is a really wasted opportunity with all the money and resources they have at their disposal. I wonder why a big corporation like Warner Brothers and DC, I wonder why those companies like tend to focus on older demographics and also provide to children. It's like they have the best of both worlds for their older audience and their younger audience, but Marvel and Disney just want to focus on children exclusively. I wonder why that is. I mean, maybe somebody can answer that question for me in exchange for all the information coming from my thoughts that I've given you guys today. Anyway, I look forward to all the answers down below. Uh, let's make this a great interaction. See you guys soon.